Out of all the notable times of year people celebrate, Halloween has always been hands down my favourite. Valentine's Day? That's either depressing or an obligation. Even when you do have someone to share it with, you can't win. You either do something nice, which is expected of you, or you do nothing and be hated by your partner. You either draw or lose. Easter? Yay, chocolate. A confectionery more abundant year round than tap water. Exciting stuff. What about Christmas? Okay, I'll give you that one. Christmas is fantastic. But the problem with it is, is it loses all its magic when you become an adult and from that point on it's just a mounting bill every year because your siblings won't stop procreating. Your missus is pregnant again. Ah, come on, this needs to stop. Happy for you. Ye lot have already added five extra birthdays to my year. That's not even mentioning how financially devastating this has been for my Christmas budget. What's this one gonna give you that the last one couldn't? Hello? He hung up on me. Well, let's play them at their own game, see how they like it. Connie, meet me in the bedroom. We're making 17 children. But Halloween is a time of year you can always enjoy. When you're a kid, you can go door to door, threatening strangers for handfuls of sweets like you're part of the knee-high mafia. And when you're older, you got horror movies, spooky cocktails, costume parties where strangers openly walk around in a delightful variety of your bedroom fantasies. And the biggest advantage it has over Christmas, the magic doesn't fade with age. Spooky stuff is always spooky, doesn't matter what age you are. Trust me, everyone's an adult until you wrap up watching a documentary on UFOs at three o'clock in the morning and you need to leave the dog out. Don't suppose you can hold this in till morning. So given my love for Halloween, I'd only jump at the opportunity to tell some spooky stories on here for you lot. But the thing is, I don't really have many. Problem is, I'm not a superstitious person. I don't believe in horoscopes, mediums, karma, mystics, religion, ghosts, demons, myself and so on. About the only supernatural things I do worry about is evil witches, as I've dated a few in my time, kettles that randomly click for no reason. Why aren't we investigating this? Kettles just do that. It's not even plugged in. So what? Exactly. How long as a species are we going to keep ignoring this? And I am on the record for once calling a girl a succubus. Though in my defense, I was actually just issuing a command to a heavyset girl I took home one night. But that being said, I do actually have a story of something strange that happened to me that still does freak me out a little to this day. But before I freak you out with that, I want to tell you about this video's sponsor, Established Titles. Are you sick of not getting the respect you deserve from partners, family, friends, the authorities. Well, fix that by becoming a lord or lady. Thanks to a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lords or ladies, you can pop over to established titles and get your hands on a one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, a unique plot number with the exact location to your land, and a certificate with a crest so you can finally command the respect you deserve. Why aren't you answering me? I've been calling you for 10 minutes. You failed to address me by my proper title. You can try all you want. I'm not calling you lord. As you wish. Guards! Now you're just being ridiculous. Wait, when did you get cat- But it isn't all fun and novelty because not only is established titles committed to preserving the natural woodland areas in Scotland, they also go a step further by planting at least one tree for every purchase with reforestation charities they work with from all over the globe. So you can be safe in the knowledge that when you do break out that top tier chat fuel that is showing off a lord on your credit card, somewhere out there there's a squirrel who just got approved for his mortgage thanks to you. Also the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be neighbouring my plot, which they tout is a good thing but a nice bit of land you got yourself there. Thanks. I got lucky with mine having some lake in it. It makes an amazing last minute gift and you even do couples packs. Established Titles is already running a massive sale right now, but if you use code Sergeant Ducky, you get an additional 10% off. So go to establishedtitles.com forward slash Sergeant Ducky to get your gift today. So it was late one night and I was wrapping up my shift at my job working in a movie rental shop. Now, if you never worked in a shop, or even a lot of places now that I think of it, let me tell you, when everything is shut down, dark and empty, that place feels weird. During the day, your place of work is light, bright, sitcom set vibes. But at night, it feels like it has more damn souls than the wads of tissue next to my bed. But this night was a little extra spooky because I'm closing up on my own. An uncommon occurrence, but needs be on this particular night. Now, just because I'm a logical duck, doesn't mean I'm immune to spooking myself out. I can reassure myself that ghosts aren't real. But I can tell you, that means f call to a man wandering in the darkness of a shop presumably built on ancient graves at half eleven on a dark winter's night. So I just finished cashing up the tills and doing paperwork, and my only job left to do was the hoovering, which I wasn't really looking forward to, because firstly, if something was to sneak up behind me, I'd never hear it coming over the sound of the hoover. And secondly, most of the shop is darker than a nanny in the 1960s. I could have turned on the lights on the shop floor, but you know what people are like. Soon as I turn them on, they'll all come hopping off the window like moths. Hello? Hello? What's wrong? Well, it's late at night. There's a close sign right there next to the open hours, which also state that they're closed right now. The doors are locked and all their monitors are off. But the lights are on. That's exactly what I was thinking. I've absolutely no idea what to make of it. Have you tried banging on the glass and shouting like a lunatic? I was just about to do that. Okay, let me help. Ah! 
You know what really bugs me about those people? You'd ignore them banging on the glass for 10 solid minutes. Then when you finally get so annoyed and you open the door to tell them that you're closed, they'll be like, all right. We'll pop back tomorrow then. And walk off not a bother on him. But anyway, I decide to bite the bullet and brave the darkness so I can be out of here as fast as possible. So I grab Henry, whose expression seems more sinister to me for the first time, channel my inner Luigi, and wander into the darkness of the shop floor and start hoovering. This takes a while though because, well I'm bad at hoovering. <laughs> thing. <sighs> hey Connie, you're a woman, you'll know. I'm doing the hoovering. What do you do when it stops giving you suction? Replace it? That seems a little bit harsh, no? Alright, fair enough. Pack your shit, I want you gone by the morning. Also, the cable of the Hoover isn't long enough, so I gotta play musical sockets as I make my way around. And I'm on edge, because I keep thinking I'm hearing something pop or snap over the sound of the Hoover, which causes me to keep stopping. Now, I know in reality, I'm probably just hearing the clanks of the heating system cooling down, or mice going at it in the ceiling. But on my head, it's the distinct snap of a latex Johnny as the ghosts prepare to go a full goblin mode on my arse. So I'm really starting to get a move on at this stage. Moving at a tempo my arms haven't seen since my teenage years. <laughs> I hope you go away. I'm sore. But I wish that's as bad as it got. So I had most of the shop done at this stage and I had moved to the final socket. Now you need to know something about plug sockets in Ireland. They look like this. This is probably familiar to you if you live in a place formerly owned by the British. Pretty unremarkable. You got your two sockets and a switch for each. These switches turn off the power to the socket so if something was plugged in and this was switched off there'd be no power going to it. Pretty handy in day to day life. Particularly useful if you want to keep something plugged in that you don't want drawn power as some things do. And these were the exact sockets we had in the shop. And what happened next freaked me the f*** out. It's going to sound minor and underwhelming, but it lacks any reasonable explanation that I know of, so you tell me. So I'm at the last plug of the night and the switches, as always, are turned off. And as I reach down to plug the hoover in, the switch for the socket I'm going for f***ing switches on by itself. I hadn't even touched it. My hand is still about a foot away from it. My insides immediately turn to water. I'm almost certain a little bit of poo came out. I am freaked the f*** out because I know for a fact that I influenced that switch in absolutely no way, shape or form. I don't think it was any kind of safety trigger because one, in my 30 odd years around these plugs, they've never clicked on or off by themselves. And two, it turned on, not off. No amount of rational thought was drawn any conclusions. So I just did what any brave man does in a situation of unfiltered fear. Nope, nope. Nope, 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 nope. And noped the f*** out of there. The following day I asked my co-workers if this ever happened to them, thinking maybe it was a feature in these particular plug sockets, but they all predictably looked at me like I was absolutely mental, so I never brought it up after that. I never did get a good explanation for it though. I'd like to think there was a ghost just wandering by as I was about to plug in, but he forgot he was a ghost for a second and just decided to help get the switch for me. Oh, not to worry chap, I'll get that for you. There you go. Ugh, does somebody fart? So there you have it lads, an unexplained mystery of Ducky's life. I look forward to the clever electrician immediately explaining this as a normal socket phenomenon in the comments and making me look like a complete dumbass. But in the meantime, have a happy Halloween, I hope the young ones out there enjoy filling their bags and the old ones enjoy emptying theirs. And I will leave you with this message and catch you lads and ladies in the next one.